This is lesson three in our Calculus 2 series, the natural exponential function. We mentioned in the last lesson that in pre-calculus, exponential functions were not formally defined for all real numbers. We talk about the evaluations for x being rational, but the argument for irrational x values is not formally presented. And that's what we're going to get to in the next two lessons. Here, we're going to start with the definition of e to the x for all real x, including the irrationals, where e is our number that we learned in the last lesson. It's the number for which ln e is equal to 1. And in the next lesson, we expand to exponential and log functions of any base a. Now we know from the last lesson that f of x equals ln x is strictly increasing on its domain, and therefore it has an inverse function. So we're going to start by calling its inverse function exp of x. We're going to then show that exp of x is actually the same as e to the x for all rational x values. And then we define e to the x to be exp of x for all real numbers. So again, at this point, we know what the number e is, and we know how to take e to the x for x rational. That's what was covered in pre-calculus. Now we want to fill in the gap and be able to define e to the x on the entire real line. So we start by showing that the inverse function to ln x that we're calling exp of x, we start by showing that is equal to e to the x for all rational x values. And then we define e to the x for all real x to then be exp of x, the inverse function to ln x. So let's define y equals exp of x to be the inverse of y equals ln x. That's to say y equals exp of x is the same as saying x equals ln y. So now, if r is rational, laws of logs give us ln of e to the r is equal to r ln e, which is equal to r times 1, and that's equal to r. Since exp of x is the inverse function of y equals ln x, we already know that ln of exp of r is equal to r by composition of inverse functions. So now we have ln of e to the r is equal to r, and ln of exp of r is equal to r for all rational numbers r. But ln x is a one-to-one -one function, so that tells us that exp of r must be equal to e to the r for all of these rational numbers r. So now we define e to the x to be equal to exp of x for all x in the real numbers. And this is our definition of e to the x, the exponential function of base e. And we call this our natural exponential function. So now we know that y equals e to the x is the same as saying x equals ln y. We know that e to the ln x is equal to x for positive x values. And we know that ln of e to the x is equal to x. These two are by the composition of inverse functions. We also know that e to the 0 is equal to 1 since ln of 1 is equal to 0. So that gives us this graph for e to the x. And we can also see here the graph of y equals ln x, the inverse function. Now notice here the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x, that's equal to 0. And the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the x, that's equal to infinity. So before we go on to talk more about this exponential function, let's just take a minute and see a more complicated limit example that will use these limits. Let's take a look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the 3x minus e to the negative 3x over e to the 3x plus e to the negative 3x. Now if we just tried to take the limits directly, we would get 0 minus infinity over 0 plus infinity. And infinity over infinity is an indeterminate form. So we need to do a little bit more math to simplify before we can take this limit. So let's rewrite here e to the negative 3x as 1 over e to the 3x in both the numerator and the denominator. Then to simplify this fraction, let's multiply by e to the 3x over e to the 3x. So now we're going to have e to the 6x minus 1 
over e to the 6x plus 1. So now we're here. Now, as x goes to negative infinity, this is going to go to negative infinity, and so this is going to go to 0. Again, here, 6x goes to negative infinity, and so e to the 6x goes to 0. So what we're left with is negative 1 over 1, and that is equal to negative 1, and that's our limit. Okay, now let's talk about the derivative of e to the x. We know that f of x equals ln x and f inverse of x equals e to the x are inverse functions. And we also know the derivative of f. We know f prime of x is equal to 1 over x. So now let's try to find the derivative of e to the x. This is going to use the relationship between the derivatives of inverse functions that we learned in lesson 1. Remember, f inverse prime of x is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. So in this case, that's 1 over f prime of e to the x. f prime of x is 1 over x, so that means in the denominator here we have 1 over e to the x. And this all simplifies to e to the x. So we just found the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. Now when we have a composition of functions, when we have e to the g of x, we use the chain rule and get the derivative of e to the g of x is going to be e to the g of x times g prime of x. So for example, for y equals e to the 5x squared, our derivative y prime is going to be e to the 5x squared multiplied by the derivative of 5x squared. So that's multiplied by a 10x. And so that's 10x e to the 5x squared. And that's our derivative. Let's take a look at y equals e to the x ln x. We're going to have to use the product rule here. So I would like you to pause the video, take a minute, and work on this derivative. Using the product rule, we have the derivative of e to the x multiplied by ln x plus e to the x multiplied by the derivative of ln x. So that's going to be e to the x ln x plus e to the x times 1 over x. And if you like, you can factor out an e to the x to simplify. Let's take a look at another example. y equals cosine of e to the pi x. This is going to be a double chain rule. So again, please pause the video, take a couple minutes, and work on this derivative. We start by taking the derivative of cosine and evaluating it at e to the pi x. So that gives us negative sine e to the pi x. And now we need the derivative of e to the pi x. This is another chain rule problem. This derivative here is going to be e to the pi x times the derivative of pi x. So that derivative is just pi. So our final answer looks like negative pi e to the pi x sine of e to the pi x. Now let's take a look at antiderivatives with the exponential function. Since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the antiderivative of e to the x is also e to the x. And of course we add in our constant of integration. So let's take a look at e to the 1 over x over x squared. Integrating here, we notice that we have a composition of functions. And remember, when you see a composition of functions, you want to try u substitution, where u is equal to that inside function. So I see a composition here, and I let u equal 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. And then du is going to be its derivative times dx. So we get negative x to the negative 2 dx or negative 1 over x squared dx. And that's fantastic because that denominator of x squared here is exactly what we need for our du. So let's take a look at our original integral and let's write it in terms of u. So we have here e to the u. And now what do we need for our du? We need a negative 1 over x squared dx. We have the 1 over x squared dx, we don't have the negative. So I'm going to put a negative on the inside and a negative on the outside. And then the negative 1 over x squared dx, all of that becomes du. This is a u, so this becomes negative 
integral e to the u du. And so taking the antiderivative that remains e to the u, now we have plus a constant. And then we want to answer in terms of x, so we have negative e to the 1 over x plus c. Let's take a look at another. Here we have a definite integral, so you're going to be plugging in bounds, and we have x e to the negative x squared. Now I'd like you to pause the video here and take a few minutes to work on this integral. Since we recognize here that there's a composition of functions, we have negative x squared plugged into the exponential, we want to start by trying u substitution where u is equal to negative x squared. So then du would be negative 2x dx. And so we need to put in a factor of negative 2 into our original integral. And so on the outside, we multiply by a negative 1 half to compensate for that. Now we have negative 2x dx. That's our du. And we have e to the u. We have a negative 1 half on the outside. And now let's take a look at our bounds. We have to be careful with this. Our original integral had bounds of 0 and 1, and the variable here was x. So this is saying x is going from 0 to 1. When we change to an integral on u, we need to change our bounds as well. So when x is equal to 0, what's the corresponding u value? Well, we said u is equal to negative x squared, so if x is 0, u is also then going to be equal to 0 here. So this bottom bound is 0. When x is equal to 1, u is equal to negative x squared, we get u is equal to negative 1. So our upper bound here is negative 1. Now, if you're uncomfortable with the idea of having a lower number as your upper bound, you could switch the bounds and get rid of this negative sign. That's perfectly okay. Or you can just compute the definite integral as it is with the negative sign, plugging in the top bound, then plugging in the bottom bound and subtracting after you integrate. Either way is fine. So here I have the negative 1 half. I integrate my e to the u and it remains e to the u. And I plug in my negative 1 and my 0 and I subtract. And so we're here, and we get negative 1 over 2e plus 1 half. Let's take a look at another example. We want to find an equation of the tangent line for y equals e to the x over x at the point 1 comma e. So remember, what do you need to find the equation of a tangent line? You need the point of tangency, and you need the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line is going to be given by the derivative of this function evaluated at this point. So please pause the video, take a few minutes to work on that. So the slope of our tangent line is going to be y prime evaluated at 1. So I'm taking the x value here and I'm plugging it into the derivative. So the first thing we need is y prime and we need a quotient rule for that. So that's going to be x times the derivative of e to the x minus e to the x times the derivative of x over x quantity squared. So we have x times e to the x minus e to the x times 1 over x squared. Simplifying our numerator a little bit, we have e to the x times x minus 1 over x squared. Now we want to evaluate at x equals 1. That's the point we were given. So we plug in x equal 1, and we get a slope of 0. Now remember that a slope of 0 means that we're going to have a horizontal line. So we're expecting a y equals line as the equation of our tangent line here. Well, let's go ahead and plug in our slope of 0 into the equation of a line in point slope form. m is equal to 0, so this right hand side is 0. And we have y minus e on the left. So y minus e is equal to 0, and y equals e is the equation of our tangent line. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on the natural exponential function.